my fellow Americans. I am back with some new comic reviews for the weekly comic pull. And uh, that's essentially, I buy comics and I read them and I'll let you know what uh, I think about them. Before I start, I want to put in a shout out for my own uh, comic book company, Manos Publishing, where we publish Red Knight in print and digital. Uh, right now the website has issues one through four out. And hopefully in April, we'll be able to release issue five. So uh, check us out at the link below. Now, hey, let's get talking about some uh, comic books here. I have all four from Marvel and or IDW. Uh, we're doing that confusing uh, Marvel action uh, line from uh, IDW, I, which I do not understand. But hey, whatever. Uh, I got uh, America... Chavez, uh, Made in America, or Made in the USA, excuse me, uh, number one. I have last week's Marvel Snapshots Captain Marvel from last week. Uh, I missed it, so I decided to pick it up this uh, this week. Marvel Action Captain Marvel, n uh, number one, uh, out of, uh, I guess, a two-part story. And uh, this piqued my interest, so I checked this out. It's... Demon Days X-Men number one. Now, uh, let's get going to, uh, we're going to do a Marvel sandwich here. We're going to talk about uh, America Chavez, uh, two Captain Marvel books, and then uh, Demon Days. So let's get going. Um, I don't have too much experience with this character. I know she's popped up in uh, the Marvel Rising cartoon. I haven't really uh, read much of uh, anything really related to the, uh, the Young Avengers uh, title. Uh, I just know of uh, America Chavez. I did pick up the first couple issues of her previous series, which I'll be honest was somewhat underwhelming. Uh, covers were awesome though, very nice cover art. But uh, this, uh, I don't have too much experience with her. I know she is from another universe, uh, let's see, uh, sent by her, her uh, mothers and to escape you know, the devastation that's going on there and she has like built up a new life here. That's what I know, and she has, she's super strong, can fly, and has these kind of portal powers or something like that. So, uh, let's see, it's uh, Kalinda uh, Vasquez and uh, Carlos Gomez are uh, the uh, writer and artist on this. And we get a little bit of backstory, which is actually nice for a person like me who doesn't know too much about the character. We get to see uh, her early days once she escaped the other universe and she landed into the arms of uh, this family right here, or who are the people who adopted her, you know, Clark Kent style. And then we uh, jump back to uh, the present where we're going back and forth uh, between her and Kate Bishop, Hawkeye, fighting a bunch of uh, mutated uh, giant uh, moles. And they're kind of not too dissimilar to the badger moles from Avatar now that I think about it. Uh, they have been like mutated and set loose on some people by some some unknown force and okay they're fighting and that's when you know let's see uh ramon uh america's girlfriend uh shows up uh that almost sounds like something you'd say about a uh, plucky well-known actress she's america's girlfriend no no she's technically literally america's girlfriend so um they come in and kind of finish up. What's interesting is uh, America gets knocked out and then wakes up later and, uh, let's see, uh, Ramon tells her like, hey, it's cool, uh, we got it, don't worry, are you okay? <laughs> uh, which is kind of cool. And, let's see, by the way, she's getting this weird feeling about uh, something going on with home, so she heads back and sure enough, uh, there's been some sort of like attack. Uh, Spider-Man actually is there to help her uh, get through this uh, force field. And she is able to arrive in time to save her uh, adopted family, uh, which is very sweet actually. And she gets this ominous note. Actually, the few minutes before the fire started, uh, an, 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 uh, a uh, threatening letter uh, showed up underneath uh, the door. Uh, so, okay, someone's going after her family or has some kind of tie into her past. So, uh, this is pretty cool. I assume Made in the USA subtitle is uh, a miniseries. It doesn't really say. You know, miniseries these days almost don't have 
You know, back in, you know, just a few years ago, they used to say miniseries or would say one of five or something like that. Now they're a little loose on that kind of thing, which is a little annoying. So I assume this is a miniseries. Uh, I don't know how long it is. Maybe it isn't ongoing and made in the USA. It's just the subtitle, which actually, to be honest, that's a pretty cool subtitle. So, uh, I like this one a lot. It's a good start, and I will probably at least stick with the story arc if it's an ongoing. Um, so, I'm curious. The art's really gorgeous. Um, I don't believe I've seen Carlos Gorna Gomez before, but uh, holy crap. Uh, really strong art. Really good. Uh, really good, strong first issue. Uh, definitely check it out. If uh, America's one of those characters you've been uh, been either a fan of or you've been kind of like curious about, this is a good uh, issue to pick up. Now, let's get back over to uh, some Captain Marvel here. i got a couple here. I'm going to start with last week's issue. Uh, I was going to pick this up and I completely forgot about it. And luckily, my comic store had one issue left. So it's part of Marvel's Snapshots line. And uh, that's where they're kind of like doing a showcase for uh, some of their up and coming uh creators. Uh, Mark Wade is the writer in this, so he's not the up-and-coming uh, writer. He's kind of been around. It's Claire Rowe who is the artist here, and I guess I'll try and spotlight her uh, when talking about the, this issue, but uh, the uh, story essentially uh, revolves around uh, Jenny, who's this uh, kind of troubled girl kind of trying to figure herself out, and, you know, her mom, and, you know, the authority figures in her life are trying to pressure her to, you know, to kind of fit in as best as possible. You know, the typical teenage uh, kind of stuff. And let's see, she's getting a little frustrated frustrated over this conversation she has with her mom, who clearly loves her, but doesn't kind of get it and isn't really helping the situation, even though she is trying to help. And uh, she hears these, you know, com this commotion going on not too long, so she gets uh, on her bike, uh, takes off, and over the hill is this gigantic uh, battle concluding some sort of, like, fantastic story arc or some sort. Uh, it's really cool. We got, uh, let's see, Captain America, we got Spider-Man, uh, we got Thor, uh, we got uh, Miss Marvel, and uh, let's see, is there anybody missing? Oh, Iron Man's here, uh, Captain Marvel's here. Uh, pretty cool. And they stop some sort of uh, alien attack, <laughs> which I love. Uh, we got kind of like two, uh, we got this really lovely um, splash page, and then we get sort of what I guess you'd call a half splash page, uh, which very nicely uh, uses page space here. Uh, I dig the fact that she pulls out like, uh, like a phone and uh, gets a selfie uh, <laughs> with herself in front. Uh, it's very nicely done. I mean, and come on, I mean, who wouldn't do that? Um, but anyway, uh, the trouble seems to be over. Uh, we're going to shift focus a little bit more to Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel. And I'm glad we're doing that because I that's a, that's a team, that's a duo that I don't really get to see focused on as much. Uh, there's been kind of a distance between the characters uh, where sometimes you get to see, like, uh, I've seen actually in the last couple of years a little bit more of, like, uh, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel and Iron Man, you know, Miss Marvel and Spider-Man, you know, you know, Miss Marvel and Miles Morales Spider-Man, but uh, I sometimes, you know, worry that, you know, the relationship between her and Carol is just, you know, not strong enough sometimes, and that's really, uh, the relationship is really reinforced here. Uh, it's interesting, because this girl, like, uh, while uh, things are cooling down, Captain Marvel goes inside the spaceship to check things out, and, and uh, Miss Marvel waits out in front uh, for and she goes, okay, you know, keep an eye out on things. Uh, I'll be right back. And, you know, she runs into Jenny. And Jenny, like, fangirl, fangirls over her, which is kind of funny because, I mean, Kamala is basically a year away from being her. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting uh, switch for her. And she gets into this conversation with her uh, because she, uh, Jenny worries about being, like, kind of, like, you know, kind of like pointless or anything like that being uh, around the heroes. And, you know, she goes, hey, you know, don't don't call that stuff pointless. Don't call these feelings pointless. And she goes into, generally, she doesn't get too specific, but, you know, uh, the flashbacks give us the details. And it kind of gives us uh, the flashbacks of her kind of like uh, bringing up and her, her uh, household and how the person she wants to be is kind of like 
pressured uh, to, you know, the, 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 the authority figures in her life are trying to pressure her not to be the person that she wants to be and stuff like that. And, uh, they have that kind of connecting uh, conversation. Then it's uh, Kamala's time, turn to you know check things out, and, and uh, Carol's waiting out front, and she runs into <laughs> Jenny too, and they start talking, and uh, she's the more authoritative figure here, the more uh, you know kind of idolized hero of the of the group, and she's like, you know what, this is the same crap I dealt with as a kid, you know, she you know brings into like how, you know, her dad was really about you know gender roles and how he wasn't very supportive of her. And, uh, you know, we get into that a little bit, how she's kind of had to fight, you know, you know the, the system and, you know, her own internalized uh, issues uh, and finding people like Ben Grimm and, you know, other uh, Air Force pilots that have kind of been her, uh, her inspiration. And, of course, we get uh, one last fight. <laughs> um, and it's kind of sweet. It ends on a really sweet note that, uh, you know, she's going to try and, you know, continue to be, you know, the best person she can be. Uh, even though she's probably not going to be seen again, she's probably not going to be here or anything like that, uh, we get the idea that, you know, she's going to, she's being inspired by them uh, to be the best person she can, uh, which I I think is really nice. And that's something in superhero comics that needs to be reinforced uh, over and over again. We should always touch on these things. And uh, the art's really nice. Um, it, I'm trying to, think of what artists this reminds me of. You know, I'm thinking a little bit of, I don't know if Kevin Nolan is the correct person to compare this to, or um, it has a couple of artists, uh, and I really do like it. It's good, strong pencils, and I can see why uh, Marvel chose her to be one of the artists they spotlighted. It's a really nice work. Uh, almost reminds me of some of the DC's better artists from the from the 90s, for instance. Uh, that sort of in-between gap between indie art and superhero art. I don't know. Uh, I, re I like this one a lot. Uh, I'm going to give this five out of, round, five out of five round chips. Uh, nice stuff. Uh, I'm going to check out some of these other Marvel snapshots. Uh, I'm glad they're doing this. It's a good way to like bring focus to some of their uh, upcoming artists. Now let's get on to the other Captain Marvel book, and it is Marvel Action Captain Marvel number one. And no, they didn't just start a new series, they just renumbered it, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Marvel's renumbering has spread over to the IDW books. Oh no! Uh, this is still written by Sam, uh, Sam Mags. Uh, we have a different artist on this, it's not Sweeney Boo. Uh, it is uh, Mario D. Panino. And uh, Mario has a uh, more kind of like, uh, like more friendly kind of uh, simpler cartoony look, uh, which does kind of fit uh, the uh, storyline. Uh, let's see, it's a, I think this is a two-part story. And essentially, you know, to uh, make a long story short, uh, let's see, Captain Marvel runs into uh, Ghost Spider and they run into these fake versions of Mysterio, I know he's always fake, but faker than usual, uh, Mysterio and Dr. Octopus uh, for training, and it turns out they were actually Miss Marvel and Squirrel Girl. Uh, let's see, it's cool. I, by the way, I enjoy seeing them hang out together, and they haven't really been hanging out in the regular uh, 616 universe, and I think that would be really cool. Um, we get to see a little bit about uh, how... <laughs> They've gone on TikTok, or actually they call it something else. They call it uh, Click click Clock, which actually is just as reasonable a, a, of a name as the, the real one. Um, anyway, I could uh, believe that that is a actual real competitor of TikTok. So, uh, let's see. Things are going okay, and then they're suddenly attacked. Uh, not too, not too much of a complex story. Uh, it's cute. It's fun. Uh, there's a lot of like snappy dialogue. The uh, stuff about TikTok is uh, pretty funny. Uh, I'm gonna give this four out of five ram chips. Uh, the art's really uh, cute. Uh, the uh, writing is uh, pretty fun. Uh, I will never understand. I'm gonna have to. I feel like I have to investigate what the hell is going on between Marvel and IDW. Why does IDW? sometimes does books for Marvel. They're a different company, or are they? Maybe they're not a different company. Maybe they're, own, maybe they're both owned by Disney. Or maybe IDW 
just has a licensing agreement with Marvel. I don't know. And maybe Marvel thinks, well, it's cheaper than uh, doing our own kid-friendly books. Yeah, you, you can do it, IDW. Who cares? Um, I, it might be as simple as that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, these are fun. Now, let's get back to one last book. And it is, uh, I think this is part of a series of one-shots uh, with X-Men. And this is Demon Days, uh, number one. And this is written and illustrated by Peach, Mo Peach Momoko. And I have heard of Peach Momoko, but I haven't really seen her work. And holy crap, is it gorgeous. Uh, I saw a preview of this book a couple of days ago online and wasn't planning to get it until I saw that and absolutely fell in love with uh, this work. Absolutely gorgeous, fantastic. Uh, this seems to be some sort of like uh, different continuity uh, outside of canon type of samurai style story. Uh, you know, anything you'd see in like maybe Kurosawa or reminds me a lot of uh, Princess Mononoke uh, from Studio Ghibli. Uh, so, let's see, Psylocke comes into town, and I don't think she's even really named, but it's obviously Psylocke. And she <laughs> is accompanied by a wolf named Logan, uh, which is pretty funny. Uh, she encounters uh, this uh, witch sorceress named, I think they call her, uh, let's see, what do they call her? They call her uh, Juju, which it, obviously she's a stand-in for uh, Jubilee. Uh, she has the same color scheme. Uh, she deals in fireworks and, and light, and uh, she like even has, <laughs> she even has like an X, Oh, here we go. So she has like X earrings and she has a band, a makeup uh, band across like her eyes, sort of like her shades. She has that kind of personality. Uh, so, okay, the town has been uh, having problems. They've been fighting with this, uh, this Oni, this uh, spirit that has been like fighting them and, you know, scaring them off uh, out of the woods. And the Oni is very Hulk-like. He is red, but uh, he comes across more like the kind of the standard uh, Hulk smash uh, character. And he has like this little son child uh, that he's taking care of that looks a little bit like the Abomination. Um, and it's, it's kind of very similar to Princess Mononoke, which is uh, actually not too different from a lot of like folklore. The spirits uh, are in the forest and the humans are digging up more and more of the forest and, you know, making their lives a little bit more difficult to like get around. And so that's causing tension. Uh, at the same time, this <laughs> venom shows up, uh, this giant snake-like monster uh, possessed, I guess, by the spirit of Venom or something like that. It's, you know, it's funny how well the Venom symbiote works with this idea of uh, evil spirits uh, and such. So they actually decide to all work together to rid the town of the greater problem, the Venom, and it, oh, just every page of this, even the standard, like, talky scenes, are gorgeous. Uh, the battle scenes are fantastic. I absolutely recommend this wholeheartedly. I think this is my favorite comic I've picked up this week. Easy. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's five out of five Ram Chips. I don't know what else they're going to be planning to do with this uh, Demon Days thing. Uh, if they're doing any more, uh, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see more of Peach Momoko's uh, work. Uh, this is the first time I've been exposed to her work, and it's absolutely stunning. Uh, great stuff. I'm a sucker for all this kind of uh, Japanese folklore and uh, like uh, Middle Ages era of uh, Japanese storytelling. Very, very good. I highly recommend this. Uh, I think everything was pretty good this week, uh, but this is probably my uh, number one choice with, uh, let's see, the uh, America shot as uh, number one uh, closely uh, following that. It's not a bad week. Uh, so, hey, is there anything you picked up this week? Uh, let me know in the comments below. You can click, uh, what is it, like and subscribe and the notification bell. Uh, for all things Manos, you can find me on uh, Twitter, Facebook, 
uh, Instagram, uh, Tumblr. I always even have a TikTok where it's Justin Cristelli where I just dump some stuff online over there. Uh, go check me out. And, uh, of course, if you want to read my comic books that I write, uh, Red Knight is available at manospublishing.com in print and digital. Issue 5 is coming out in about a month, month and a half. I think that's it for now, so push the button, Lindsay.